Lesson 28. A few lessons ago, we learned the word specto, and specto means I am watching. But we're limited with the word specto because with the word specto, all we can say is I am watching. We can't say you are watching or they are watching. All we can say is just that I, the first person, singular, am watching. So to learn how to say things like you are watching or we are watching, Or they are watching. We need to learn additional forms of specto, and so that's what we're going to start doing now. We're going to look at the second person singular, third person singular, etc., etc. Additional forms of specto, which will allow us to say a wider variety of things. So the second person singular form of specto is spectas, and so what spectas means is you are watching or you watch. And of course, it's singular when you're just talking to one person. So we have to pay special attention to the endings that we see at the end of our verbs. If you see specto, that means I am watching, and if you see spectas, that's you are watching. So we've learned up to this point that with nouns, you have to really watch the endings of nouns to know what their function is. And now it's the exact same thing with verbs. You have to carefully watch the endings of the verbs to know what the verbs mean. And that's why Latin is called an inflected language. The endings on the ends of the words tell us what the words are doing in the sentence. That is, what their function is. So always pay careful attention to the endings of words in Latin, whether they be nouns or verbs. And down below the chart, I remind you that spectos can mean you watch, you do watch, or you are watching. But you don't really need to worry about that so much because the context of the sentence will sort of tell you which of those is the best translation. And what we want is just the smoothest sounding, the best sounding translation. Let's take a look at our exercises. In number one, we get to use our new word that we've learned this lesson. And that is spectos. Spectos means you are watching. And lunam is the direct object form of the word luna, which means moon. So number one is you are watching the moon. Number two is the same as number one, but with a different direct object. Spectos is you are watching, and stellos is stars in its direct object form. So number two is you are watching. The stars. In number three, we get a little bit more practice with our new word spectos. Spectos means you are watching, and then we have the word et being used twice to mean both and, and that's connecting our two direct objects: lunam, which means moon, and stellos, which is stars. So number three will read like this: You are watching both the moon and. The stars. Number four is very similar to number three. We have et being used twice again, and our verb is spectos again, but our direct objects are different. So number four reads: You are watching both the sailors and the farmers. In number five, we have the optional word ego, which means I, being used with our verb, which is specto. Specto means I am watching. And we have two direct objects, and they're being joined by the word et, which is being used twice to mean both and. So number five is I am watching both the sailors and the farmers. In number six, our verb is specto, which means I am watching, but it's being negated by the word non. So non specto means I am not watching. And we have the optional word ego there, which means I. So ego non specto means I am not watching. And then we have a direct object, which is stellas. That's the direct object plural form of the word stella, which means star. Notice the a s ending. So number six is I am not watching the stars. Number seven, sumus means we are. And it's being negated by the word known. So known sumus means we are not. And our predicate is poetai. So seven is we are not p 
poets. Number eight, S means you are when only talking to one person, and our predicate is Agricola. So number eight is you are a farmer. Number nine, sunt is our verb, and it's being negated by the word known. Agricola is our predicate, and so we need the word they to be the subject of the sentence. The word they is included in sunt. So non sunt will be translated as they are not, and then our predicate is agricoli. So number nine is they are not farmers. Number 10, our verb is est. It's being negated by the word known. We do not need the word he that's included in est because nauta is the subject and poeta is the predicate. So number 10 is the sailor is not a poet.